What's going on YouTube? AWS Lambda is the most popular serverless framework out there today. And one of the best ways to monitor your Lambda functions is to use Sentry. And in this video, it's exactly what I'm gonna show you. Before we get into that, if you're not a subscriber, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you get any value out of this video, make sure to hit that like button. Now let's get into it. So the very first thing we want to do is have a Sentry project uh, set up and go under, uh, go to projects, create project, make sure to go right here to serverless and you can select whichever language you're using, uh, Python, Node.NET, uh, those are the only three they have currently uh, as default for Lambda. Um, so that's one of the things we can try to choose first is just choose your language here. We'll just choose node um, and you can set up alerts if you want to, or you can set them up later. Uh, we'll try to do that later since we're mostly just trying to um, configure the monitoring and set it up with your Lambda function. Um, and so we'll want to make sure that we have the project name and we'll just do Lambda. Oops. Lambda Sentry test for this one. And we just make sure we also put it in the correct team. We say create project. So this is the very first option we have on setting up Sentry to monitor your Lambda functions. Probably one of the easiest, but it does cost a little extra money since it does create a cloud formation stack in your AWS account. Uh, so you'll have to pay for the resources that uh, that cloud formation stack runs. Uh, in order to monitor all your uh, Lambda functions. However, this is also a much more robust and easier to maintain solution than the manual solution. Here, you can actually set this CloudFormation stack up and for all existing Lambda functions that you already have running, you can actually have this automatically just monitor all your Lambda functions that are already deployed and you can also just easily add any new Lambda functions that you deploy in the future. The manual setup is not going to cost you anything extra and it's not all that hard to set up for a particular function but it does require you to actually go into each function's code and add some code to each and every function that you have deployed or you're going to deploy. Um, and so it is free, but it does cost extra effort. This is one of the trade-offs you have to decide on what you want. Um, so for our initial one, we're just going to go ahead and click Add Installation. We click Go to AWS. And here we actually have the Create Stack template already set up. Uh, we want to make sure we are going to uh, deploy it into the correct region we want to deploy it in. So make sure we have the correct region selected here. We're just going to use US East 1. And you can rename your stack to whatever you want. But this is pretty clear on what this might be. Um, you can maybe just pop in uh, the word Lambda in the name so we can make it a little bit more clear. Make sure to click I acknowledge that might create some IM resources and custom names. And click Create Stack. We're gonna let this stack create and I'll see you in just a little bit. All right, so it looks like our stack has been created. Next, we need to go back to the Century AWS CloudFormation um, screen where we're actually gonna try to create the stack and just go ahead and click, I've created the stack. And we wanna pop in our account number, the region, and last, we'll need to, uh, if your external ID is not already populated, you can go over here to your AWS console, click on the parameters for the stack, and you should be able to find your external ID there. Next, we'll want to just go ahead and click Next. And in here, um, currently I don't have any Lambda functions in my CloudFormation account, but here normally you will see a list of all the different Lambda functions you have in your account. And you can select which one you want Sentry to automatically uh, monitor. Once you've selected each and every one of the functions you want monitored, go ahead and click Finish Setup. 
and you should be good to go. So now that you're good to go, anytime your Lambda function might throw an error or uh, anything like that, it'll automatically be sent to Sentry and you can set up notifications in your project to be able to send any kind of these error notifications directly to like Slack, email, um, anything like that so you can automatically get notified. Um, if anything, depending on however you want to configure these alerts so that you can you know, take action immediately or as soon as possible uh, if it's something that could cause your users um, to be running into many errors that you need to solve ASAP. Another option is to do it manually and now for manual setup all you need to do if you have a this is a node app so we'll need to run either npm install and sentry serverless or yarn add sentry serverless and then once that's done in our lambda function code we'll want to import sentry and then uh, configure it with the dsn that you have for your particular project and then uh, there's some extra configuration you can actually do for the configuration which i'll link to in the description below and for your actual lambda function handler we actually need to wrap it with the Sentry AWS Lambda wrap handler. All you need to do really is to wrap that around your code and anything that gets triggered in there, any errors, any of that kind of stuff will automatically be sent to Sentry. Like I said, it's not very much to do in the manual sense, but if you have many different Lambda functions that are already deployed, or if you have many, many different Lambda functions that you're going to have running, this definitely makes it a little bit more tedious to keep everything in sync. And so the other way it creates the node or cloud formation stack and it does everything you need it to do as far as monitoring goes, very easy to maintain because all you have to do anytime you add new functions to your account, go back in there to your account, enable the new function and your function is automatically monitored by Sentry. Uh, so that way you don't have to go back in and do any of this kind of manual configuration for all your new methods or new, your new functions or you don't have to go back and add all this code to each and every one of your previous Lambda functions. But make sure, one of the things you want to make sure of when you do this is that you might have many different Lambda functions running in your account but some of them might be for different applications and so if you're trying to set segment those for different century projects you'll need to make sure that you actually select the proper lambda functions that tie into your specific lambda or century project that you're creating for this so just make sure that those are in sync the correct lambda functions selected when you're going through and doing the automatic uh, cloud formation stack route after that One of the things we can do for uh, Sentry doing as far as performance, they actually just recently came up with this and added this capability to their monitoring. Uh, they have different ways you can actually go in here and just set up your function to be able to monitor the performance of your function. So it might not be throwing errors or anything like that that the traditional monitoring that Sentry had would really be triggering anything, but it could also be running a lot longer and possibly run into some kind of infinite loops or whatever that might be, you know, slowing down your users' responses and causing them to leave your website or web app. Or even if it's not taking super long, but it could be improved, it could save you money in the long run and you're paying for all those extra milliseconds that you're running for each time your Lambda function is triggered. So this performance monitoring that Sentry has added recently could be a great, great thing for both your users and the cost of your of running your web app. I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can also check this out and think about adding this to your Sentry or your Lambda functions in order to trace the performance of it and check that out and see how everything works and be able to hopefully optimize your Lambda functions as good as possible. Once again, if this really helped you out and you really found some value from this video, make sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're really interested in trying to learn as much as possible as far as DevOps and you're interested in tricks, tips, the latest news, please subscribe now, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.